Hello there, everyone. In this module, we'll be learning about diabetic retinopathy. Let's begin with a quick introduction. Diabetic retinopathy is a chronic complication of diabetes, often referred to as the silent killer disease. It is more commonly associated with type 1 diabetes mellitus, and unfortunately, India currently has the highest number of diabetic cases worldwide. Several important risk factors contribute to the development of diabetic retinopathy, including the duration of the disease, smoking, hypertension, poorly controlled blood sugar levels, obesity, and the presence of kidney disease. To prevent the onset and detect diabetic retinopathy at an early stage, regular screening is crucial. For individuals with type 1 diabetes, Screening should commence after five years of diagnosis. In type 2 diabetes, screening should be conducted at the time of diagnosis, followed by annual eye examinations each year thereafter. Let's talk about the pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy. Elevated blood sugar levels in diabetes contribute to various changes within the retinal blood vessels. These changes include platelet aggregation, increased adherence of leukocytes, and thickening of the basement membrane. These factors collectively promote the formation of thrombus, leading to the blockage of vessels and subsequent retinal hypoxia. In response to this hypoxia, the body produces a substance called vascular endothelial growth factor, which stimulates the growth of new blood vessels, a process called neovascularization. As the disease progresses, the parasites, cells that regulate blood flow, in the vessel walls undergo necrosis, resulting in the disruption of normal blood flow regulation. Additionally, the balance between parasites and endothelial cells is altered, with a shift from the normal 1 to 1 ratio to 1 to 4. These changes gradually weaken the integrity of the vessel walls, leading to the formation of microaneurysms, which are one of the earliest signs of diabetic retinopathy. Now let's learn about the classification of diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is categorized into two main types, proliferative and nonproliferative diabetic retinopathy. First, let's cover nonproliferative diabetic retinopathy. It's the early stage of diabetic eye disease. During this stage, tiny blood vessels in the retina start to leak and form microaneurysms. The severity of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy can vary and is classified as mild, moderate, or severe. In the mild form, only microaneurysms are present. As the disease progresses to the moderate stage, Additional signs such as hemorrhages and microaneurysms become visible. Dot and blot hemorrhages, which involve the outer plexiform layer, as well as superficial flame-shaped hemorrhages affecting the nerve fiber layer, are observed. Severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is characterized by the 4-2-1 rule. This means that there may be either four quadrants of dot and blot hemorrhages, two quadrants of dot and blot hemorrhages, or one quadrant showing intraretinal microvascular abnormalities, known as shunt vessels. In non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, specific changes occur within the retina. Two common findings are the formation of hard exudates, caused by the accumulation of cholesterol deposits within the outer plexiform layer of the retina, and soft exudates, also known as cotton wool spots, are observed in the nerve fiber layer of the retina. Now for proliferative diabetic retinopathy. This represents an advanced stage of the disease characterized by the growth of abnormal blood vessels in a process called neovascularization in the retina. These newly formed vessels are fragile and prone to bleeding, leading to the presence of floaters in the field of vision. When scar tissue forms as a result of these abnormal vessels, it can cause the detachment of the retina a serious condition that requires immediate medical attention. In addition to the potential complications mentioned, 
Proliferative diabetic retinopathy also increases the risk of developing neovascular glaucoma. Next, we'll talk about the diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy. Commonly used diagnostic techniques for detecting and evaluating diabetic retinopathy include the following. Fluorescein angiography. This procedure involves the use of fluorescent dye called fluorescein, which is injected into a vein in the arm. The dye then travels through the bloodstream and into the blood vessels of the retina. As the fluorescein circulates within the retinal blood vessels, a series of photographs are taken to capture the dye's progression. These photographs provide detailed information about the blood flow in the retina, helping to identify abnormalities such as leakage, blockages, and areas of non-perfusion. Fluorescein angiography plays a crucial role in diagnosing and monitoring diabetic retinopathy. Optical coherence tomography. This is a valuable diagnostic technique used in the evaluation of diabetic retinopathy. This non-invasive imaging method utilizes light waves to generate high-resolution cross-sectional images of the retina. By employing optical coherence tomography, healthcare professionals can obtain detailed information about the retinal layers, particularly the macula. Optical coherence tomography enables visualization of the macular region, helping to identify any abnormalities, such as fluid accumulation or edema, and changes in retinal thickness or integrity. Ultrasonography. Ultrasonography, specifically B-scan ultrasonography, is a valuable imaging technique used in situations where direct visualization of the retina is challenging, such as when there are dense cataracts, vitreous hemorrhage, or media opacities. B-scan ultrasonography utilizes sound waves to create a detailed two-dimensional image of the internal structures of the eye. By using B-scan ultrasonography, the presence of retinal detachment can be evaluated, providing information about its extent and location within the eye. It also helps identify any associated conditions or complications that may be contributing to the retinal detachment. Now let's move on to the treatment of diabetic retinopathy. First, we'll deal with treatment in non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The primary objective is to achieve optimal control of blood sugar levels with a target HbA1c level of less than 7%. This requires a comprehensive approach that includes lifestyle modifications, such as adopting a healthy diet and regular physical activity, as well as appropriate medication management, which may involve oral medications or insulin therapy. Regular follow-up visits are crucial in monitoring the progression of the disease and determining the need for further treatment interventions. In cases where macular edema is present, Laser photocoagulation using a neodymium-doped yttrium aluminum garnet can be performed. This technique aims to target and seal leaking blood vessels in the retina, reducing fluid accumulation in the macula and improving visual function. Now for treatment in proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The primary treatment option for proliferative diabetic retinopathy is panretinal photocoagulation. This procedure utilizes either argon or a double-frequency neodymium-doped yttrium-aluminum garnet laser to create small laser burns in the peripheral areas of the retina. By targeting these areas, abnormal blood vessel growth is reduced, helping to prevent further complications associated with neovascularization. Monoclonal antibodies that target vascular endothelial growth factor such as ranibizumab and bevacizumab, can also be used. These medications are administered through intravitreal injections directly into the eye. By inhibiting vascular endothelial growth factor, they help to slow down the growth of abnormal blood vessels in the retina. In certain cases of proliferative diabetic retinopathy with macular edema, intravitreal steroids like triamcinolone and dexamethasone may be administered. These steroids work to reduce inflammation and decrease fluid accumulation in the macula, 
thereby improving visual function. Lastly, let's cover the complications. First, macular edema. One of the significant complications associated with diabetic retinopathy is macular edema. Macular edema refers to the buildup of fluid in the macula, which is the central region of the retina responsible for clear and detailed vision. This complication is commonly observed in diabetic retinopathy, especially in cases of non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The presence of macular edema can lead to blurry or distorted central vision, significantly impacting visual function. Next is vitreous hemorrhage. A potential complication of proliferative diabetic retinopathy is vitreous hemorrhage, which occurs when abnormal blood vessels in the eye leak or rupture, resulting in bleeding into the gel-like substance called the vitreous. This condition can lead to a sudden and significant loss of vision if a considerable amount of blood accumulates, obstructing the passage of light to the retina. Following that is retinal detachment. Retinal detachment is a condition characterized by the separation of the neurosensory layer of the retina from the underlying retinal pigment epithelium. In individuals with proliferative diabetic retinopathy, the abnormal growth of blood vessels and the formation of scar tissue can increase the risk of retinal detachment. When retinal detachment occurs, it can result in a sudden and complete loss of vision in the affected area of the retina. Also, there's neovascular glaucoma. This is a serious and advanced form of glaucoma that can occur as a complication of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In this condition, abnormal blood vessels start to grow on the iris, which hinders the normal flow and drainage of fluid from the eye. As a result, there is an increase in intraocular pressure, causing significant damage to the optic nerve and leading to vision loss. Individuals with neovascular glaucoma may experience severe eye pain, reduced visual acuity, and irreversible damage to their vision. The last complication is tractional retinal detachment. Tractional retinal detachment is a condition where scar tissue develops on the surface of the retina, causing it to become detached and displaced from its normal position. This condition can result in significant vision loss and requires surgical intervention to repair the detachment and remove the scar tissue. Thank you for listening to this module about diabetic retinopathy.